In this video, we're gonna go through the rules for assigning oxidation numbers. So throughout these rules, I'm gonna abbreviate oxidation number with ON. So the first rule is that the oxidation number of any lone element is zero. So by lone element, I just mean an element by itself uh, with no charge, a neutral lone element. So for example, a lone uncharged copper atom here would have an oxidation number of zero. Okay, the, the second rule says, the oxidation number of any monatomic ion, so what does that mean? A single atom ion, so a single charged atom, is the charge of the ion. So it sounds you know, tricky, but it's really just saying if we've got a charged lone copper atom with a plus two charge, the oxidation number is the charge, plus two. Okay, then the sum of all oxidation numbers in a neutral compound is zero. So that makes sense. If the overall compound has a charge of zero, all the oxidation numbers in the atoms that make up that compound must add up to zero. For example, CO2, carbon dioxide, that's a neutral compound. And the oxidation number of the carbon is plus four, while the oxidation number of the O2 is negative two for each oxygen times two of them. So plus four minus four is zero for the overall charge of the neutral compound. Okay, then we say the sum of all oxidation numbers in a polyatomic ion is the overall charge of the ion. So all this says is that if we have an overall charge on a polyatomic ion like nitrate, for example, NO3 minus, then the sum of the oxidation numbers must be the same as that charge, negative one. So if we see here, the oxidation number of uh, nitrogen, sorry, is plus five, whereas the oxidation number of oxygen is minus two, and there are three of them, so plus five minus six is negative one. So that rule holds true. Then we say group 1A elements generally have a plus one oxidation number in compounds. So an example of a group 1A element in a compound would be sodium in sodium chloride. And here we see it has a plus one oxidation number. So that's an example. Group 2A elements generally have a plus two oxidation number in compounds. So an example of a group 2A element in a compound would be calcium in calcium chloride and it's got a plus two oxidation number here. So the oxidation number of any halogen in a compound is usually or almost always negative one. So halogens, remember, are group 7A elements, and these include things like uh, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and uh, here I use the example bromine. So bromine has a negative one charge in this compound, sodium bromide, and it's a halogen. Okay, then we say the oxidation number of hydrogen in a compound is usually plus one. So for example, hydrochloric acid or HCl, there we see the oxidation number of hydrogen is plus one. And I wrote in an exception here. Um, there are a few exceptions to this rule, but one exception is um, generally when hydrogen is bonded to a, a metal like calcium, calcium we know uh, is from group 2A, and group 2A elements generally have a plus two oxidation number in compounds. So we'll have to follow that rule. And then the hydrogen to balance out that plus two, we'll have to have a minus one uh, oxidation number to, uh, because there are two of them. So two minus two will equal zero, which is the overall charge of this compound, calcium um, hydrogens, because that is uh, the rule we saw where the sum of all oxidation numbers in a neutral compound must be zero. Okay, and then finally, the oxidation number of oxygen in a compound is usually minus two. And uh, so an example here would be CO2, carbon dioxide, like we saw before. So the carbon is gonna have a, a charge of plus four to balance out this minus two charge of the oxygen because we know there are two oxygens. So it'll be four minus negative two times two or four, um, I'm sorry, four plus negative two times two or four minus four must be zero. And then I wrote in an exception here, uh, peroxide, that's an exception. Because in this case, um, the hydrogen is gonna have a plus one charge, as it usually does, because of this rule. And there are two of them, so we have to balance out this plus two charge with a minus two charge from the oxygen. And we know that since there are two oxygens, we've gotta have a minus one charge for each one. So in this case, the oxidation number of oxygen would be minus one. So you can see uh, that there are a few exceptions to these rules. 
But in general, if you remember all of these, uh, you should be well on your way to efficiently and accurately assigning oxidation numbers.